Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm here with the Samd Race 6. It's made in France by Mustache. And I also have the uh, Samd Trail 7, which I'll cover at the end of this section of the video review before the ride test. As you can see, Mustache makes beautiful looking bikes. They have a real attention to design and quality. And as they only make e-bikes, they're taking, they're not trying to take an existing bike and add a motor and turn it into an e-bike. Instead, they innovate and they bring unique features such as their hidden power battery design where we've got a Bosch power pack hidden into the uh, down tube there and they often design their own specific e-bike components such as the uh, shock and the rims and a few other really uh, neat features. So in this video I'm going to go through all those unique features, take you through the specs of the bike, go on a ride test with you as well. For the detailed specs for current pricing to order online, you can visit our website at citruscycles.ca. There you'll find our contact info, so if you want to email or call to set up an appointment to come try it yourself here in Ladysmith, or take advantage of our Try at Home program anywhere on Vancouver Island or the Lower Mainland, you can find all of our details there. So let me start with this idea of the hidden power system that Mustache uses on their Bosch powered e-bikes. So you can see it's a really nice uh, integration. The battery is kind of hidden into the down tube there. Um, but this is actually a standard Bosch power pack, not the new power tube from Bosch, which uh, is designed to be integrated into the frame. And that actually is a real advantage. So to remove the uh, power pack here, I just slide down on this kind of rubberized cover, pull that off, and now you can see we've got the Bosch Power Pack 500 in here. This has all the advantages of a Power Pack. That is, there's a carrying handle to make it really easy to swap. It's uh, plastic instead of aluminum, bringing the weight down. And one of the big things that uh, Mustache likes about the Power Pack design is it does bring the center of gravity down. The power tubes are cool, has a really nice integrated look, but the power tubes are quite a bit longer, so that does shift the weight of the uh, battery up the frame a little bit. And as well, the power tubes aren't really designed, yes, they're removable, that's not a problem, they're user replaceable, but it's a little bit tricky to bring a spare along because they are so long and, and tall. And depending on the bike manufacturer, sometimes there's a plate that you're having to take on or off the battery to mount it on the frame. Um, whereas with the power tack, it's designed to be easily removed and swapped out. So if you're going on longer rides, it's nice to be able to throw a spare in your backpack and bring it along. Or if you're riding with somebody else that has a power pack bike, it's nice. A lot of times we have people that'll come in, they'll buy two bikes and they'll buy a spare battery for the two of them to share. And so the first person to get to half swaps the battery and then they still have a half in reserve. So there are some benefits to having the power pack integrated into the frame uh, rather than the uh, new power tube. So that's something to consider and I really do like the way they've designed that. It's integrated in there nice and slick, putting the cover on and off super easy. It's kind of this rubbery material so it's not going to crack or anything like that. So that's uh, really one of Mustache's uh, innovations is that idea of the uh, hidden power. Another interesting innovation here is their suspension. We do have 160 millimeters of travel up on the front fork. This is the Suntour Ion. Uh, really nice uh, air fork. We do have a through axle with their Q-lock uh, quick release, making it really easy to get on and off, but nice and uh, sturdy. And we do have some rebound control, or some comp compression control up here, sorry. Uh, of course, it's an air fork, so you can adjust the air. And uh, down at the bottom, we have some uh, rebound control as well. On the back for the rear shock, they actually have a mustache-specific uh, shock. So. Again, designing specifically for e-bikes mustaches, saying, you know what, one of the really important things is grip. Uh, so we're going to have this dynamic rebound control and we're going to make it grip oriented because on an e-bike, when you have the assistance of the motor, especially this Bosch CX with the 75 newton meters of torque, um, it's not unusual on, you know, kind of the older style uh, full suspension e-bikes to start losing traction before you lose momentum to climb up the hill because you've got that power. So they really focus this uh, suspension system to yes be comfort and give you control but also to give you a lot of traction and grip for climbing the hills. So that's awesome. Um, we actually have this Holotech uh, carbon aluminum composite uh, linkage here and uh, you're thinking, well, why do we need carbon fiber on an e-bike? You know, we're not really concerned about weight. But what this does is it allows them, uh, carbon fiber, it, it's easier to do unique designs with than aluminum. You can, you can really design 
it a lot uh, better. Uh, it's a more malleable type of, uh, you know, I'm not a bike designer, but that's what they tell me. And, and you can see when you're looking at it, it's definitely uh, a really innovative uh, linkage here that they've uh, relied on some uh, carbon and aluminum composite for, so that's pretty cool. We do have a, a lockout here, of course, if you want to lock out your rear shock. It is an air shock as well, so you can adjust the air, and we've got some rebound adjustment on that as well. I should mention when talking about the uh, front fork here that they include this really cool little uh, fender uh, that's uh, built in here. You don't have to get your own uh, plastic floppy one. This is actually quite rigid, which is really cool. And that, of course, is going to not only keep the mud out of your face, which is nice, but it also helps protect the uh, stanchions and keeps them uh, a little bit cleaner. So that's a, a nice uh, little feature that they've added. Another example of Mustache's unique uh, engineering. These are their own 35 millimeter rims, and uh, it's very easy to uh, set them up as tubeless. They are uh, welded rims, and uh, they've also designed uh, the bike to have the Minion DHF. It's a plus size tire, 27.5 by 2.8, tubeless ready um, on the front and on the back. Uh, for climbing, they've got the Recon Plus. And so it's nice that they paid attention to the, you know, the different purpose for the tires on the front and the rear. Uh, tubeless ready, the rims are tubeless ready. I'd definitely set this bike up uh, tubeless. We have the EXO protection, so a fair bit of uh, puncture resistance in these tires as well. Again, uh, more innovation here. These are mustache specific uh, crank arms. They are um, reinforced alloy, so nice and strong. And look at the saddle. This is a interesting saddle. I actually really enjoyed running on, uh, riding it. It is a mustache branded saddle. Um, it's got a little bit of gel here, a little bit of a rise at the back. So when you're climbing, you're not sliding off the uh, back. And uh, it's a bit of a, they describe it as a grippy material. I certainly didn't have problems sliding off of it, but when I run my fingers over it, it doesn't really feel grippy. So maybe it, they're talking about the interface between the sides here, between, uh, uh, your clothing and the uh, material on the saddle but uh, I do find it very comfortable and of course we've got a dropper post here as well that's again a mustache specific dropper post it um, John tells me setting up the bike it was a little bit of a pain to install but I can tell you riding it it's awesome it's really fluid we've got the uh, remote up here uh, really easy to adjust and uh, just you know they're really paying attention to the uh, details of the uh, bike. We've got uh, these kind of ribbed grips at the top, at the front here. They are locking, so they're not gonna spin on you as you're riding. Nice wide, really nice wide bars. Not a lot of rise on them. Very flat stem. Really nice, clean cockpit. Great riding position. Uh, they do include in the box these battery-powered lights. I'm not sure if that's maybe a requirement in France. We've got a reflector on the front there and just an on-off switch. It's not a strobe light or anything like that. Again, in, in Europe, generally, you can't have a light like that. And they've got one as well for the back here. They include those in the box. They are just battery-powered, um, relatively bright, um, and they just uh, clamp on with the uh, rubber band there, so easy to remove if you wish. I imagine that's perhaps some sort of uh, regulatory requirement. They also have uh, reflectors uh, on the uh, spokes as well, which, of course, you could remove if you didn't want those. Uh, a couple other really uh, interesting features. They've got this kind of rubberized protector on the frame here for acting as a chain guide. And because the chain stays quite a bit lower than the chain here, they don't really need to have any sort of um, chain stay protector, but you may wish to add something on there if you wish. And uh, we've got a bit of a bash guard here on the uh, chain ring, which is great to protect the uh, front cog and the chain. The pedals are uh, actually a good choice. A lot of times uh, manufacturers just not even bothering to include uh, pedals anymore because people will often change them to something that they prefer. Um, these do have uh, pins and a nice wide platform pedal, but of course that's an easy thing to change. Now here's something really awesome that you don't see very often. This is actually a 46 tooth uh, cassette here. So this is a massive, massive climbing gear. A lot of times they're just uh, 42 teeth. This is the Shimano GR XT uh, with the Shadow Plus uh, clutch here. Uh, and uh, having that massive 46 tooth climbing gear is, is incredible because when you compare the, uh, pair that with the Bosch CX drive, which is giving you tons and tons of torque, you're actually able to climb up pretty much everything because you can get into such an easy gear and spin right up. 
While we're at the back here, I should mention these are the Magira MT5. They're quad piston brakes. I think we've got uh, 203 millimeter uh, rotors on there as well. And so if I come up to the front here, you can see massive rotor for stopping, quad piston brakes, lots of modulation. They are single finger uh, levers and I've really enjoyed riding with these uh, MT5s. Uh, lots and lots of modulation, especially with those quad pistons. Tremendous stopping power, which is great on an e-bike. And definitely a bike like this, you can see with the uh, slacker angles on it, the travel that you have on the front fork and the, the rear shock, you could definitely uh, get into some serious riding with this, so get some serious speed going down hills, and you want to be able to rely on those brakes. The uh, hubs, interestingly, of course it's a boost standard, which is what we see on the 27.5 plus. Um, those are actually alloy CNC with uh, sealed uh, bearings, which is uh, great as well. They've really designed this bike to last and uh, to ride really well, and you'll see that in the uh, ride test. Uh, so we do have also down here a really cool uh, mustache-specific uh, chain guide that's going to, to help keep your chain on and avoid uh, some of the bouncing around and stuff. We have uh, this great uh, uh, bash guard here for the Bosch CX drive. Got a little bit dirty on the ride uh, down here to do the video. And this is the Bosch CX drive, so uh, that gives you uh, a number of advantages. First of all, with the mid drive, the weight is better balanced in the center. And um, with the mid drive, because it's driving the chain, not the rear wheel, when you change gears, when you use that massive 46 tooth uh, cassette in the back there, that's directly impacting on the motor and making it easier to climb hills. The CX drive gives you maximum amount of torque of the Bosch drive unit, 75 newton meters, which is torque is what you need to climb the hills, gives you lots of hill climbing capability. The Bosch system is super responsive as well, so all you need to do is put a little bit of pressure on the pedals and immediately it's going to respond. Uh, up to 300% assistance when you're climbing a hill. So really very, very agile, responsive system, ideal for a bike like this where you're going to be riding fairly aggressively. While I'm down here, I should point out we've got a really nice uh, 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 cover for the, to protect the rear shock as well, the stanchion while you're riding, keeping it clear of uh, dirt and mud and things like that. So the Bosch system is sensing your torque, that is how hard you're pedaling, your cadence, that is how quickly your legs are moving, and your speed a thousand times per second. So it's essentially reading your mind. And it uses that to determine how much assistance to provide. So at the top here we do have the Purion display. Bosch designed this display as a nice compact display that's a little bit more crash resistant than the Intuvia. It also frees up some space on your handlebars here if you'd wanted to put a smartphone holder or something like that, you can do that. Uh, there is a USB port on the Purion display for diagnostic purposes, but you're not able to uh, charge a USB device from that display. Nice and easy to read. You've got your current speed, current level of assistance, and battery level down there. You can adjust the level of assistance using the uh, plus and minus on the remote here. So if I move that down to uh, off, of course, ride just like a regular bike. Eco is giving you 50% of your input power. So while it's calculating how hard you're pedaling, your cadence and your speed, it's figuring out what you're doing and offering another 50% in addition to that. When you move it up to Tour, that's giving you 120%. And then the EMTB is a dynamic adaptive mode, really cool for riding the trails. I almost always ride an EMTB. And what that does is it senses what you're doing and basically will automatically adjust all the way up to the 300% of assistance that's provided in turbo when you're climbing a hill, uh, all the way down to the 120% uh, in, in tour, anywhere in between that 120 and 300%, depending on what you're doing. So obviously we don't want to ride in turbo all the time, that'll reduce our range and we don't really need all that power all the time. But when you get to a hill and you're climbing, it automatically moves you up to 300%. When you're at the top of the hill and cruising along, it'll move you down somewhere towards that 120% to maximize your battery life. So I love having the EMTB. But but of course, if you don't want to have to pedal hard to get up the hill, just boost it up into turbo and it'll give you the 300% uh, regardless of how hard you're pedaling. I almost forgot to point out that we do have uh, a protector here to uh, cover the key slot. So if you want to remove the bike, of course, you need a key. You can see the hole for it in there. This is really cool though. This is on a leash, so it's not going to fall off and you're not going to lose it. You just press that on and it's nice and sealed. And down here we also have the same idea cover for the charging port. Pull that off and 
inside there you can see the charging port and again it's on a leash so it's not going to fall off and look how well sealed that is really you're not going to have to worry about getting junk inside the uh, frame here where the battery is uh, recessed now, of course you can remove the bike the battery from the bike and also charge it inside if you wish and the charger is the same it comes with a four amp charger so charges it up nice and fast so this was the uh, Mustache uh, Samdi Race 6. I'll take you through the Trail 6, uh, sorry, Trail 4 in a few moments, and then I'll take you on a ride test. But if you have any questions, you can head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. I realized when I got back to the uh, bike shop here that I forgot to mention we do have the possibility of enabling walk mode. So I've done that for this bike. And so that allows you to press and hold the button underneath here. See the display says Walk Plus. Uh, once I press and hold the uh, plus button, that'll cause the uh, motor to move the uh, chain and the uh, crank arms along at about a four or five kilometer an hour pace. Um, that's useful, for example, if you ever need to push the bike, for example, you've got a stair bypass, it's too steep and pushing it up that way, or you're on the ferry, they don't like it when you ride off the ferry ramp. So you can just simply enable that walk mode and now you don't actually have to push the bike yourself. The bike will move itself along. All you have to do is steer it. The other thing I forgot to point out with the Apurion display is in addition to seeing our current speed, current level of assistance and the uh, battery life, we can toggle what we see on the uh, trip computer at the bottom here. So if I press and hold the minus key, you can see my trip distance. And if I press and hold the plus and minus at the same time, that'll reset that. Press and hold minus again, and that's going to show the total odometer on the uh, bike. And minus again is going to show me my range. And so this is saying, based on the fact that I'm below 80%, I've got four bars, so I'm somewhere between 60 and 80%. Uh, and the uh, riding that I just did, I could go another 99 kilometers. That's dynamic and adapts uh, based on the last few kilometers that you've ridden, along with the uh, distance, uh, or sorry, the capacity of the battery. It also adjusts as you change levels of assistance. So if I go to tour now it's saying I've got 50k left. And if I go to EMTB, I'm looking at 37 and up to turbo brings my range down to 31 kilometers. So that's a really useful feature and that's just toggled through by pressing and holding the uh, minus key. I've got the SAMD Trail 4 is the black one up front here and then uh, the Race 6 uh, in behind it. The Race 6 has a slightly slacker geometry. It's a bit hard to tell uh, in the video here, but you can tell the difference in the brakes. So we've got the Magura MT5s on the Race 6 here with the 203 millimeter rotors and uh, quad piston brakes with the uh, Magura. With the uh, Trail 4, we have Shimano hydraulic brakes. Uh, we still have uh, fairly large, large rotors, but I think they're uh, 180, and it's the M395, which is a uh, dual piston um, hydraulic brake on the front here. Other changes is that uh, with the Trail 4, we've got the Recon Plus both uh, on the rear and on the front here, whereas with the Race 6, the uh, Minion DHF does duty up on the front for extra grip uh, and the Recon Plus is still on the back of the Race 6. Now there are differences, we've got 160 millimeters of travel on the front fork here uh, with that Suntour Ion on the Race 6 and this is a 130 millimeter on the Trail 4. And uh, interestingly enough, and I don't know if it's that big of a difference, but the uh, Race 6 is 100 grams lighter and of course different colors here we've got this kind of gray uh, white black combination and on the race six this beautiful red so hopefully that summarizes the difference between these two bikes for you Okay, I'm gonna start out on the road here a little bit to head towards the trails and get on some trails. And I have to say, uh, as soon as I got on this bike, I just had a big smile. And I think 
I really love the riding position, the geometry. You just, you feel, you get on and it's just, it feels great. And then you start riding it. And it's really fun. Nice clean cockpit here. Um, do have that light still on that they came with the uh, bike if you're riding on the road. It's kind of funny they even give you a bell, I guess. Some places that's a legal requirement. But uh, yeah, it's handy if you're riding on trails or there's pedestrians. Nice smooth shifting. Loving the uh, suspension so far. Of course, haven't been much on trails yet. But I really like the riding position. It just really, uh, yeah, it's fun and it really pushes you forward to uh, really, you know, push yourself, have fun. I'm really loving these uh, Magura MT5 brakes. They're basically one finger brakes and uh, lots of modulation. And quad piston, of course, gives you tons of stopping power. All right, we'll try to find some uh, steep hills here. Test out the CX drive and that massive 46 tooth uh, cassette. A bit of tire noise from the front tire but it's actually not bad given how grippy that front tire is so if you do end up riding a fair bit on pavement you're not going to really run into issues with it being too noisy there we go nice steep climb here no problem getting up there you can find some more steep sections but wow that uh, 46 tooth at the back there just lets you climb up anything really. And of course with the Bosch CX you get tons and tons of uh, torque, no problem. Little things like that. I'll head up, uh, go under the tunnel here up the hill. I think it's 28% grade. I don't think I'll need my first gear for that hill. Certainly the Bosch system gives you tons and tons of torque. Torque is really what you need to climb those hills. It's nice to have. Bell comes in handy after all. Sometimes we lose the uh, GPS in the camera going through the tunnel there, so we may not get an accurate reflection of the grade. I should also point out the speed is often not accurate on the uh, overlay. I'll try to call out the speed every now and then. Um, I think the uh, camera's calculating speed based solely on uh, the horizontal distance. And of course, when you're climbing, you're actually covering more distance. 
than the horizontal distance would imply. So I'm heading up the hill here. An EMTB. If I didn't want to work as hard, I could pop it up in the turbo. And then I don't have to pedal as hard. Uh, but even in EMTB, if I pedal hard, it automatically moves me up in the turbo. I'm averaging about 12, 13 kilometers an hour. So tons of effort on my part. And I didn't need to go into my uh, easiest climbing gear for that one, obviously. Yeah, that 46 tooth ring is tremendous for uh, climbing power. I'm almost at the trailhead, but this is actually a comfortable bike for, uh, you know, non-trail riding if you needed to have a bike that kind of does everything for you. Okay, I'm going to head onto a trail now. This isn't a mountain bike specific trail. There will be some pedestrians, so I'll need to keep my speed down, but it's a fun little trail. Test out the uh, suspension on and it's performing really well. The dropper post is really quite smooth. I'm really actually impressed with it. Easy to control the height on the dropper post. bypass here for the uh, stairs and uh, it's a good example of where these plus size tires are really handy to have. It's a 2.8 inch wide, 27.5 and when you get into really soft material like this, this really loose, deep, soft gravel that on a narrow tire you just kind of sink right in with these wide tires. I'm having no problem. I'm purposely swerving to see if I can maintain, maintain control and not a problem just floating right above them. And of course that also uh, helps to have the tire pressure a little bit lower. head back up and uh, that's one of the great things about an e-bike is you can have as much fun going up the hills as you do going down. So 
Got it in the EMTB mode, and because I'm pedaling hard, it's providing that support up to the 300% that you'd find in a turbo. I wish and activate turbo manually and you don't have to pedal as hard it's nice having that choice Well, I never had to resort to that uh, big climbing gear, my first gear, 46 tooth cog there. But it's nice having it. Shoot, I need it. Whew, so, lots of fun, great bike. Really enjoyed riding it. If you want to come try it yourself, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca.